Welcome to our second step in solving linear programming problem using Solver in Excel. So in our first video, we set the template for question number two. And as you can see, we have our um, decision variables. I'll clear these cells. So these will be um, D8 and E8 will represent our decision variable cells. Once it will be solved, we'll get the values. Uh, we can see that G9 represents the objective function. We can see that we have a formula inside a function that calculate the objective function in. We have our left inside constraints and you can see that we have um, the formulas or functions that calculate the left inside of the constraint in each of the cells and also we have the constant values in the right hand side for each constraint. Once you have your template you can go to solver you click on the data tab and then you click solver and your goal will be first of all to let me um, delete and clean all of the solver um, pop-up window so we can start from fresh. Sometimes it will come with your previous run. Um, if it's a new uh, file, it will be empty. So um, in the set objective um, cell, what you do is you will click on the cell G9 in our case, which hold the objective function uh, calculation. Then you'll choose if you maximize or minimize your objective function. And by changing variable cells, this is where you will highlight your decision variables. So here I am, I will, cl I will click D8 and E8. Pay attention um, not to highlight the labels by mistakes, you need to highlight the empty cells. The next step is to click Add. And when you click Add, you get this pop-up window that helps you to add your constraints. So we have four constraints without the non-negativity. We'll see how non-negativity comes to, uh, how we treat that in Solver later. And instead of insert each constraint separately, what we'll do is because all constraints share the same sign, we actually can highlight all constraints together. So um, instead of clicking cell reference represent the left hand side. So instead of clicking for each constraint the left hand side separately and then in constraint we're clicking the right hand side separately. What we're going to do is in the cell reference we're going to click all the left hand sides of all the constraints together. And again you can do that only because all of them share the same sign. So we highlight the group of these four cells. And then the signs are less than equal. So you can see here the default is less than equal. If you are using a different sign, here they are. You can choose them there. And then in the constraint side, we will highlight the constant value for all the constraints. So we have four. Excel will know to match the first with the first. So first left hand side with the first right hand side, second left hand side with the right, second right hand side, and etc. We click OK and then we can see that we have one line that represents actually four constraints in this problem. The non-negativity constraint is that you need to make sure that this box is checked. If it's checked, Excel will know to apply the non-negativity variables. Also what you need to make sure is uh, the default is GRG. What you need to do is to click simplex LP in order to choose the um, proper method that Excel will solve your problem. Once you're done, you click solve. And as you can see already, the template have the solution. Here is the optimal solution. Here is our objective function value in optimality. In order to get reports, you click answer and sensitivity and OK. And then in the bottom part, you can see you have two reports. The first report will show you your objective function value and optimality, your final values for each variable, x1 and x2. And cell value, for example, is what is the left hand side of each constraint in optimality point. So you can see that in optimality point, you used all of your plastic resource and your time. So no slack. And 
constraint number three and four does have a certain slack, so it means that they're non-binding. You will also will have the sensitivity report, which we'll talk about it in our next class. So um, that's pretty much summarized all the process of running Excel Solver to solve a linear programming um, formulation. Pay attention, this is an option, uh, one of many options that you can do. There are different type of templates that you create. As long as you um, understand that you need a space for your decision variable, a cell for your objective function, a cell or many cells for your left hand side of your constraints and a cell or many cells for your right hand side of your constraints um, any template will work okay thank you and have a nice day